Hello guys, welcome to Security Red vs Blue Team Panel. So in this video, we will be discussing on network basis that one must uh, be aware. So before we are starting to the uh, CH session, uh, so let's get started. Um, so if you move on to the next slide, so in this video, we will be discussing on what is network and what are the different types of network and what is a LAN and WAN that is uh, the most commonly used terms in daily work basis and what is an IP address and what are the different classes of IP address and what's a MAC address and what's the uh, difference between IP, subnet, gateway and firewall and uh, we'll look at what is a switch, a hub and router and what is the NAT and the bridge interface and what are the uh, difference between the, the standard protocols uh, HTTP, HTTPS, SSL and TLS and then what's the difference between a proxy and a VPN and what's the difference between TCP and UDP? So we'll just cover all these topics, which are uh, uh, the the most commonly used terms. So let's get started with the the initial topic. So what is network? So network is one such thing where uh, the set of devices which are connected together uh, to exchange the resources uh, or the data. So so if you look at the definition, it's like a uh, the set of devices connected to communicate or share the resources. And the shared resources can be like it could be a file server, it could be a web server, or it could be a printer. It could be any other device that is connected to a network. And if you look at the uh, different types of network, uh, we have something called uh, local area network, and we have wide area network, and we have wireless LAN and personal area network and metropolitan area network. So we'll just look at the details of uh, what is LAN and WAN, which is the most commonly used terms on daily basis. So what is LAN? So LAN is nothing but a local area network, which is uh, typically a small, uh, uh, relatively used for a sh shorter distance, um, uh, for a, a smaller areas like uh, school buildings, or it could be a, the small office or university campus. So it's basically uh, uh, for a sh short distance communications, the, the LAN will be used. And it's uh, typically controlled uh, by a, either it could be a single person or it could be an organization. So this is with respect to LAN. So when it comes to WAN, uh, which is a wide area network, um, the internet is one such thing that could also be called as a WAN and where it covers the large geographical area. Even uh, we can call uh, the uh, the geographical collection of multiple LANs. It's also be called as a wide area network. So, um, so moving on to the next topic, um, IP address. So what is an IP address? So IP address is one such thing, it will uniquely identify any device on the internet. So it could be a printer, it could be a multiple computers that is hosted on the network. And uh, so it's also called as internet protocol address. And we have like uh, two different types of IP addresses that is IPv4 and IPv6. As uh, as the days moves on, like uh, many devices, like billions and trillions of devices coming on the internet. So the, the world is running shortage of IPv4. So that is the reason IPv6 came into the um evolution and, and and usually the ipv4 has uh, 32 bit in length and uh, ipv6 is uh, 128 bit in length so if we look at some of the classes of ip address we have like a uh, class a b c d and we uh, we can see uh, how do we uh, identify whether the ip is uh, uh, class a or class b type so this is the numbers uh, which represents the first three most significant bit um, of an octet so based on this we are uh, identify which class uh, the ip belongs to and also uh, there was a need for uh, uh, the private IP addresses where some of the devices doesn't want to uh, connect to the internet but still they want to be uh, present over the network so for those classes the private ipv4 classes came into picture so in that we have mainly class abc and we can look at the uh, the range that is defined in this uh, I mentioned here so this is with respect to uh, ip and, uh, and its classes so if we move on to the mac address so MAC address, it's like a, a unique address that is uh, associated with a uh, network adapter. And we can also call it as a physical address or, it, uh, or an hardware address. So um, it's typically a, 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 the, the hardware address of a cable. And uh, so in the MAC address, it mainly consists of two parts. So uh, the, the first half of the MAC address, we, we identify based on the manufacturer, who is the manufacturer of that adapter. Uh, so it could be a, like IBM or it could be HP or it could be any other vendor. And the uh, second half of the MAC address represents the uh, the serial number of the MAC address. So this is how we identify uh, uh, based on the MAC, uh, MAC address, so which is the, uh, the vendor and what is the serial number of the actual uh, adapter. So this is with respect to MAC address and moving on. Uh, so uh, moving on, so the, what is IP uh, uh, gateway subnet? 
and firewall so as as we already discussed in our previous slide so ip is one such thing which you used to uniquely identify a device on the internet so when it comes to the subnet so subnet is also called as a subnetwork and so it's like a segmented piece of the network so it mainly segregates the uh, the large uh, network into multiple smaller segments let's say we have an office building so for um, if, if if we consider office building as in one network and we need to define we need to allocate uh, let's say different ip series for a different department let's say hr department we have finance department we have uh, mc department so all these are divided into the different uh, subnetworks so so that is where the subnet uh, will come into picture where we need to uh, segregate the smaller uh, parts of the uh, uh, network elements and gateway is one such thing where it's you mainly required to uh, send the traffic between the between different networks from local network to different other networks so that is where gateway into the coming to picture uh, it will be usually a router or it could be any um, uh, l3 switches and firewall uh, if you look at firewall firewall is, uh, is one such thing it may mainly um, the filters the traffic and uh, it, um, uh, it it works based on uh, some of the rules that are already defined in the system uh, it could be a port forwarding or it could be a port blocking or it could be any other uh, set of rules that is defined in that uh, particular network so it's mainly to uh, restrict the unauthorized access from uh, from an outsider being attacked so this is with respect to ip subnet gateway and firewall and then um, one of the other common terms we used uh, we come across is hub switch and router so hub is one such thing it's just like a, uh, a, a, um, the, a it just used to send the traffic uh, it just receives the traffic on one port and uh, sends the traffic on another port so it, it just acts like a broadcast and uh, and it's a non intelligent device it doesn't uh, do any analysis on the traffic and uh, with with this device there is always the chances of uh, uh, the huge collision that is being uh, happening uh, when it comes to uh, data transmission and it and we we see uh, usually these devices uh, in the physical layer of the osi model so when it comes to the switch switch is an intelligent device and uh, it uh, whenever uh, data is transmitted from one port to another port it reads all the um, the, the mac addresses uh, uh, mac uh, mac address of the device and it stores in a, in its memory table so that's called a cam table and uh, it also um, yeah, it helps in finding the correct path where where the uh, find out the correct destination where it needs to be uh, sent and, uh, and and each uh, uh, packet traversal between source and destination will have the uh, ip along with the uh, mac address mapping entries that will be stored in the cam table uh, when it comes to router router is again an intelligent device and more sophisticated when compared to the, uh, the other any other device and uh, it, it mainly contains the routing table and it makes the right decision where to move that uh, where to send the traffic and also it uh, it, it helps in uh, uh, finding the several uh, the possible paths where the shortest destination um, for a particular uh, data transmission. So um, yeah, so this is with respect to hub, switch, and router. And so if we move on to the next uh, topic, uh, which is the NAT and bridge interface. So uh, so NAT and bridge interface it mainly comes uh, so so when it comes to NAT, so NAT is nothing but a network address translation. So it mainly used where where the security uh, is one 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 of the key thing where uh, we don't want to showcase the uh, IP address of the device or the internet. Uh, where, where we don't want to showcase the actual IP address of the internet uh, of the device or the internet. And so so if we look at the definition, so uh, actually in in the NAT, the IPs of the virtual machine and the network where the the host is present will be different so it means that both are in the different subnet but still um, the the vm is able to access the network the reason because the host will be doing the network address translation um, so uh, that is with respect to nat so when it comes to the bridge the bridge we have a direct interface so uh, so the bridge interface will be directly communicating uh, uh, with the network so which is the virtual machines are directly uh, connected to the network where the host is connected to so in this uh, uh, so it's always easier for uh, virtual machines to get onto the network but uh, but if we, if the security is the concern and don't want to um, uh, showcase the original identity so in that case uh, the bridge is not the one that we should go for so it should be uh, the nat and then um, if we move on to the next topics which is uh, uh, the the industry standard commonly used protocols which is http https ssl and tls 
So HTTP is one such thing, which is the widely, uh, widely used protocol um, uh, on the website. So whenever we access any website on the internet, so we do see uh, HTTP appended in the beginning. But one uh, disadvantage with the HTTP is that any data that is transmitted over uh, HTTP, so it's always uh, in the form of uh, plain text and anyone can uh, uh, get the text uh, and uh, who is connected to the system and they can easily uh, uh, track the uh, details. So the so that is with respect to HTTP. So to overcome this uh, disadvantage of uh, uh, this plain text carrier, uh, the HTTPS came into picture, which is a hypertext transfer protocol secure version. So it, in, in this HTTPS, uh, we do see all the traffic exchanged between the client and server will be always encrypted. So this is done via using SSL and TLS protocols. So SSL, uh, initially the secure socket layer protocol, which is uh, widely used and later uh, the industry is, uh, uh, industries have come up with uh, the upgraded version of uh, uh, it's not an upgraded version but it's an improved version of ssl that so that is called uh, um, the tls which is the industry standard cryptography protocol so the basically how the how it works is like um, in in mainly uh, when it comes to https let's say uh, uh, we, we, we open our browser and we want to access some website let's say um, icsnetbanking.com so in this case what happens is like the browser in the browser we, we type the url https colon slash www.icsaweb.com um, now the web browser will uh, uh, send a send a, uh, send a message to the web server and it will request for a certificate and the web server will web server is nothing but where the the actual icsa website website is hosted so web server will send a digital certificate and the, the browser uh, the browser where we are browsing will validate the data uh, well, validate the certificate and will ensure that the 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 the, the owner of the website is uh, uh, trust uh, trustworthy. So once once the uh, the certificates are exchanged between the parties, um, once once it is ensured that uh, it is a trust party, then they will exchange the encrypted handshake messages. So once it is done, the SSL handshake will be formed and the SSL secure channel will be established. So once the secure channel is established, then only they will go for uh, exchanging the data. So it will be in the form of application data. So if somebody wants to uh, check that, it can be uh, easily verified in the form of using a TCP dump, uh, or it can be done with the Wireshark. So if anyone have a Wireshark, uh, it, it's a, a freely available in the Google. So you can just download the, the Wireshark and uh, enable the um, packet capturing, and then, then just try to uh, uh, open any website which is secure, or it can be a non-secure. And then we, we could see the uh, some TLS messages are getting exchanged between the client and server. There will be something like client hello, server hello. So it again depends on what type of handshake they're using. So in, in TLS, we do have level one handshake, level two handshake. Uh, so when it comes to level two handshake, uh, the certificates will be exchanged by, by both the parties. When we say both the parties, both uh, client and server. So when I say client, the client means the one who is uh, operating the uh, browser. Let's say in this case, it is me. I'm opening the website called ICS and Net Banking. So server is the one such thing where uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, where ICS Bank website is hosted. So this is how uh, uh, the handshake will happen. So when, when the HTTPS is enabled, the browsers will like a browser and the server will exchange the certificates, then validates the identity that it is a trusted party. Then once the certificate is validated, they will verify. Uh, they will exchange the encrypted handshake messages. Once that is done, the, the SSL uh, secure channel will be established. So once that is done, um, the application data will be exchanged, which is all completely secure and nobody would be able to hack it unless they have the keys uh, from both the parties. So like um, so nowadays, like a lot of websites are using uh, HTTPS, even though regardless of whether they are using the sensitive data or not, it need not be uh, to have always exchange the sensitive data, but still to secure the website or uh, architecture of the website. So it's better to always have uh, the website uh, secured. And even Google also recommends in case uh, uh, if it is not secure, it will uh, inform to secure as well. And also even if the website is secured, it will validate whether the certificate is from a trusted party or not, whether it is a signed certificate or it's a dummy certificate. So all these things will be validated by, by a general Google recommendation. Um, so that is with respect to uh, uh, HTTP and its uh, protocols. Now, uh, moving back to the next topic, so which is VPN and proxy. So VPN is nothing but like it's one such thing. It will provide the encryption uh, and the security and safety at the entire system level. So it will uh, ensure that uh, all the traffic that is coming into the system and going out of the system is secure and safe. 
whereas that is not the case when it comes to proxy uh, proxy is just works for one application right doesn't uh, protect all the system um, um, uh, communications it just works on a single app it just acts as an interface between the client and server so the, but but the idea behind vpn and uh, proxy is to mainly to hide the physical presence over the uh, uh, over the internet uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the, the sake, uh, safety the vpn is more secure than proxy however when it comes to the speed of uh, accessing the vpn is less uh, less speed compared to the proxy this is with respect to vpn and proxy so moving back moving on to the last topic which is uh, tcp and udp this is the most uh, commonly used protocol in the transport layer of osa model so tcp uh, is one such thing it's uh, like a, a communic uh, it's a connection oriented protocol it mainly works on a tcp three way handshake model uh, which is uh, basically a client server architecture model where the client will be sending a uh, uh, synchronized request to the server and server will be sending uh, acknowledge to that uh, uh, for the previous synchronized that is received and also server will send its own synchronized request and client will finally acknowledge with it the acknowledge request so we can see the flow how it is it will be seen in act and act so it could be easily verified with the uh, wireshark uh, in our system and similarly um, so this is like tcp is used only when there is a like 100% uh, uh, efficiency of the data transmission is required when it comes to udp udp is uh, not a connection oriented it's a connection less oriented pro protocol and it doesn't really care about uh, whether the the previously transmitted data is properly received at the uh, de destination or not it just keeps on transmitting so it is, the best example would be like the live streaming of cricket or game or any other uh, events so this is with respect to tcp and udp i think uh, we are done with the topics so thank you thanks for watching the video please do comment share and um if do if any uh, input please do let us know in the comments and do um, keep up the subscribe to the channel and we'll be coming up with the introduction topic on um, ethical hacking soon thanks once again for watching